Hi, welcome to my channel. My name is Caroline and I'm a dairy farmer here in central Pennsylvania. Normally for this channel I do vlogs, so I show you what's going on throughout my day. Um, but with the recent COVID-19 uh, pandemic that's going on, I wanted to go ahead and just do a sit down video just talking about what dairy farming's been like uh, since COVID-19 um, pandemic has hit the United States um, and especially central Pennsylvania. Um, you're gonna hear a lot of background noise. I decided it'd be appropriate to go ahead and just do this uh, in our freestall barn here. So we got all the cows eating right now um, and it's, a beautiful day out so it sucks that we're going through this right now with spring in full swing that you know we can't really enjoy <laughs> the fact that it's getting nice out um, but as I said I'm a dairy farmer in central Pennsylvania uh, and since um, pandemic has started um, I'm filming this today is today is April 2nd um, so we're roughly into the third week um, of the social distancing uh, being in effect. So the good thing with agriculture is, of course, we are um, considered essential, which obviously everyone needs to eat. So us producing food has still continued as normal. So our day-to-day -day operations have stayed pretty much the same. Um, animals are still getting fed. You know, we're still cleaning, we're still milking cows, we're still feeding our calves and you know all of our day-to-day -day stuff is going normal as usual. Um, the only thing that isn't quite as normal right now of course is everything outside of farming. So um, you know some examples some places where we get supplies now there's some different protocols in place to keep um, the social distancing in effect um, so that we don't end up um, contaminating others. Um, it, we've also um, been a little bit concerned about getting supplies. Um, I know a lot of places that we do get our supplies from uh, did order a lot, ordered as much as they could so that they're stocked up in case um, any kind of manufacturer uh, shuts down for a period of time. Um, but so far, like I said, we're about three weeks in. So far we've been able to get all the supplies that we need. Um, how we get our supplies has just changed a little bit to make sure that um, we're adhering to social distancing and that we're preventing the spread of this, um, that we're being very sanitary. Uh, the good thing with dairy farming is um, even though these cows are big, dirty animals and, uh, you know, farming is a lot of dust, dirt, mud and everything, um, dairy farming is a very sanitary um, practice though. Um, because this is a food product, it needs to be clean and safe. So myself and employees, um, we've always worn gloves when um, milking the cows and feeding the calves. That's one of the things that uh, is the first thing you learn is wearing gloves. Um, we clean and sanitize a lot of things. Um, you know, even these cows' beds, the beds they lay on, those are sanitized a couple times a week um, to prevent bacteria and disease spread amongst the animals. Same with my calf pens. They're regularly cleaned, sanitized. All of our equipment that we use um, and in the parlor, whenever we're um, prepping a cow to get her milked and attaching that unit, we're cleaning the cow's teat ends and her, we're cleaning her teat ends. Um, and then all that equipment gets washed um, after we're done milking. And so I'm, I'm feeling very fortunate to be um, in this right now for the, just that simple fact that, um, you know, I, we're not kept inside in poorly ventilated areas. I'm, you know, pretty much outside. We have barns and our parlors, so we have coverage, but we have lots of airflow. We're wearing gloves, we're cleaning a lot of things. Um, and we're also very blessed to have um, a small crew. So at any given time, there's really only three people on farm um, for us to operate everything and take care of all the animals. Um, we only need about three people to operate. Um, which is a blessing. So, you know, we're able to hopefully mitigate um, any issues that would be the disease spread. And of course, um, lots of protocols and procedures have been placed out for dairy farmers. Um, and we've, we've briefed all of our employees on making sure that if they are sick, if they don't feel right, anything like that, then don't come to work. You know, it's not worth them risking. It's not worth us risking. If anyone isn't feeling well, they're not coming to work. Um, so far, like I said, as of today, we've been very blessed. 
um, that everyone who works here is healthy, feeling great. Um, we're following protocols and procedures. We're being very sanitary. Um, so we're very fortunate in that, and I hope that continues um, throughout this quarantine um, and that we're able to um, continue to operate as normally but not put anyone at risk and keep, keep hopefully, <laughs> everything going as normal. Um, is some other issues that have popped up as well um, that I'd like to talk about is uh, the past couple days, um, news has broke out that milk is getting dumped and that has happened. Our farm specifically, we've been fortunate, like I said, as of today, April 2nd, we have not been asked to dump our milk and we have not gotten word um, that you know the milk truck has had to dump milk once it got to the processing facility. There are other farms though in Pennsylvania who've had to dump their milk and there has been truckloads of milk that have gone to the processor once they got there they had to dump. Um, and this is all while people are are not able to get milk um, because it's not on the shelves the stores are wiped out. Um, this uh, this is occurring um, because of the fact that processing just can't switch on a dime. So uh, a lot of milk products are for restaurants uh, or any kind of food service like that. Schools, you know, normally school would be in session right now. So there would be food products and milk going to schools and restaurants. And now all of these things are shut down. So now all of this processing that was dedicated to making those dairy products for schools, restaurants, any kind of food service, that now all had to get switched to just total total retail. Because um, of course now, you know, the only reason why we're supposed to be leaving our houses is to go purchase food, so now that's where all the dairy product needs to be. So, um, you know, processing couldn't switch on a dime. And so what happened was, you know, we all got quarantined, everybody went to the store, got all their dairy products, processing couldn't keep up with it because they were you know, busy creating products for food service and now they had to switch all of their operations to making products now for retail and because of that switch it was just so delayed and obviously milk is a perishable item um, and you know milk has to get from our farm to the processor to whatever product it's going to be and on a shelf or being used within a certain amount of time. Um, so if they can't guarantee that that's going to happen and that we can't have a um, safe uh, product, then they're not going to put it out. So that's kind of why milk got dumped. Hopefully this does not continue. Um, hopefully it's, and it's not just happening in Pennsylvania, it's happening across the nation. Um, you know, as all of us U.S. citizens and people in the United States were dealing with this. Um, so those have kind of been alarming. Like I said, we're, we're blessed as of right now that we have not had to do that, if that does happen. Um, fortunately, um, we do have different programs that we're enrolled into, um, basically like insurance. Um, we have insurance that if we do have to dump that product, um, we can still get some money to continue our operations. And um, as you may or may not know if you're watching this video, uh, so dairy farming has been going through a really bad low price spell for going on five years now, which is not normal. Um, normally you go through a three year cycle. You have one great year, one average year, one bad year. Then one great year, one average year, one bad year. Um, just like any kind of uh, commodity product, you just you have an up and down. Um, it's all supply and demand, and with things constantly changing, and you know different uh, whatever's going on affects these markets. Um, but dairy has been going through a rapid amount of change um, that it just was not prepared for, and did not foresee as an industry. And so a lot of farmers have exited. Um, dairy farming already. Now with this COVID-19 pandemic going on, it might really push a lot of people out if they are dumping their product. Like I said, a, a lot of people should be enrolled in programs and there are programs available for dairy farmers to help ease this time, but it's not going to be enough if someone's already in a terrible position. You know, if you have yourself in a good position right now, your business can possibly withstand it. Um, 
but it, it depends. Every farm is completely different. Uh, so dairy farms are just like any other small business, regardless of how many cows they're making. So it doesn't matter whether someone has 30 cows or 3,000 cows. You know, it's a small business. 98% of dairy farms are family owned and operated. Um, so, you know, they're your neighbor essentially um, trying to operate. Um, this is going to be harder on small to mid sized farms, you know, just like with any business. Anyone who runs a business, um, when you're a small business owner, you know, things can be a lot tougher on you than what a larger business would be um, financially wise, just because, like I said, it's. Uh, it's tough. It's tough to withstand things that you can't foresee, things that you couldn't predict, that you couldn't prepare for. Um, but fortunately, as I stated, there are programs out there um, that, you know, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping a lot of dairy farmers took advantage of and should be doing all right um, throughout, throughout this pandemic. But it is safe to say that probably a lot of dairy farmers are going to be affected by this um, and it's not it's not going to be great um, you know and it's and of course we know as far as really any small business owner a lot of small business owners are not going to bounce back from this regardless of what their business is because of um, the shutdown um, you know people not being able to work um, so, as I said, I just kind of wanted to do a sit down, um, kind of give give my commentary on things and, and give my uh, my uh, experience so far. Um, but as of right now, we're operating as normal. Our milk is still getting shipped; it hasn't been dumped yet. Um, you know, myself and employees and everyone who works here, we're all healthy. We're all taking precautions. We're following the rules. Um, you know, we're doing our best to keep things going while not putting ourselves at risk. And um, hopefully we're doing enough. I, um, I hope, I hope this is enough. <laughs> Obviously this, this is such, uh, such a surprise to everyone. I think we all really don't know exactly what to do or or how to handle this um, but we're doing our best um, and um, hopefully I'll be posting more blog more vlogs to this channel posting more vlogs to this channel um, you know hopefully to take your guys's minds off of everything that's going on I'll try and get more content pumping out um, so that you have something to watch during this pandemic um, in this quarantine uh, be sure to also follow me on Instagram and Facebook, Covite Caroline. You can search, um, you can follow the farm specifically here uh, at Dry Creek Farm, both on Instagram and Facebook. And if you liked this video and you want to see things further, go ahead, like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. Let me know what you would like to see. Let me know your questions about dairy farming. Um, feel free on all social media platforms to ask questions. Um, Give your opinion on things that you would like to see in dairy farming and i will do my best to get that content to you thanks for watching this video bye stay safe